Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Adams from Pro Writing Aid. Thank you for joining us today for Self-Editing School. We're here each month with our favorite self-editing expert, Jo Ellen, um, and she will be here with some exciting new content for us today. I'm going to just kind of hand things over to Jo Ellen now. She can explain what we're going to be talking about, um, and then we will have Q&A at the end. So hi, Jo Ellen. Thanks for being here. Hi, Michelle. It's great to be back. As usual, we're here and we've just wrapped up the romance week. So we're going to talk a little bit about more love today and structurally editing your love story or romance, whichever we want to classify that as. So um, if we're ready, I will just start sharing my screen. See you in a little bit. <laughs> let's see here. So let's go share and moving along. Perfect. Let's see if we can make it go. Yes, we can. Oh, and it's, it's going to make a little sound every time. How great. <laughs> All right, everyone. Welcome. I am so excited to be here and talk to you about what an editor is looking for, because I know you're all writing and worried and working out there. So we wanted to go through a little bit of what an editor is looking for, specific to a love story, but not just a love story in a sense. We're actually going to look from the romance structure. So that means, you know, it's a little bit different. You can have a love portion of many different types of books, but specifically in the romance genre today. So we're just going to go through this. And as Michelle said, as you have the questions, please put them in the, the questions and answers so I can follow up on those. And if I don't get to yours, please feel free to send us an email at editors at firstediting.com. And we will get back to you because we want to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about and we'll do our best. So as we move along today, we're going to start, basically, I've walked through all of the, um, the ideas of how we apply the structural editing specifically to the romance. And what I'm looking at is, you know, from the perspective of a storage, a story coach. And story coaches are the highly certified editors at First Editing, we're the first in the world. And they've gone through extensive training using a licensed software that integrates with Pro Writing Aid. It's called Story Coach or Storyteller if you're using it as a writer. And what it allows us to do is to use our experience with romance and love stories and genres and publishing and all those different things. and not only apply our subjective editing to it, but also to use objective checklists such as story elements and the plot and the, the character development and the scenes and make sure that everything is as cohesive and it really is using technology to the highest level that we can. And it's very exciting. That's why we combine in and work with ProWriting Aid because tech and, and applying it to our personal stories is pretty exciting. So this is behind the scenes of what a story coach would be looking for when they receive your document for editing. So first, the thing we're going to do is we're going to look and identify your romance niche. And there's a lot of different ones here that you can look at. So first, we want to confirm that, let's see here, let me find get this is your love story a romance? I mean, basically there's two qualifications there with the Romance Writers Association and love relationship is basically the center of your story. And that's very, very important, but also that the ending is optimistic and emotionally satisfying. So there is something to be said. That's the terms we're going by today, but really the structure is around that and most important being the relationship part of the story. So there are a lot of different niches within romance and it's important for you to identify which one you're in because your editor has knowledge working with those specific genres. And the importance of that is that you need to engage your readers and different romance niche or any genre has specific expectations, specific forms, uh, certain elements that you have to achieve to really satisfy that reader in the way that they are accustomed to reading these books. So, you know, you are writing for yourself because you love it, but ultimately in the end, we have to write for our readers. So by identifying which niche you're in and knowing the uh, format, the expectations, the desires of your readers, you'll be able to better write your story and better engage your audience and to create more and more in, in your series. So 
when you're going through this, your editors are going to evaluate certain things because what we're talking about today is what does the editor look for? You can look at it from a writer or an editor, but specifically from an editor. And as this is self-editing school, we're sharing this all with you so that you become a better writer. By knowing how to edit, you will have a better conversation with your professional editor when you go down that path. You will understand your weaknesses, you will understand your strengths, and you'll become more aware. So self-editing revisions are all part of the writing process. So again, taking all this in, you won't learn it all at one stop. It takes years and years, the same way it does to become a writer. But as you become more familiar with it, you will become a better writer here. So editors are going to evaluate your genre. And again, mentioning, are you fulfilling the expectations of your audience? And that's specific to each of those niches. And are you engaging those that audience in the relationship? And what I mean when I'm referring to the relationship is I'm referring to the actual characters. Are they hoping, wishing, and really supporting the characters that you've created because character development is so important. They have to enjoy and love and really root for your protagonist or your heroine. So are you following your promises as a romance author to create this engaging uh, story, adventure where they follow along and they are emotionally engaged in the, the overall story? And secondly, you know, does your stories link correspond to the standard norm for romance. And we just, you've been through this in the last week, I'm sure, but romance novels are between 40,000 to 100,000 words. So it's quite a large range, but it also allows you a little bit more, um, it's a little bit easier on you because it's not as long as some other genres demand, and that's good. So you can get to 160 pages on the very low end or all the way up to 400 pages if you like. So, and your editor can confirm those specifics. They're gonna be looking at this. So again, by knowing what they're looking for, you'll be able to communicate cohesively on, you know, are you up to date? Are you doing things? Are, are you, have you left holes in there that they can be aware of and help you and make recommendations along the way? The most important thing when you're submitting your, your document for editing, as your romantic blurb. And the blurb, it comes along with the instructions. You know, you're sending in your manuscript, your draft, which is basically beginning, middle, and end. And you're sending it because they're gonna look at this. It has to be formatted. You have to know, you know, certain things to get started. But the blurb is really, you know, it's the part that lets the editor confirm that you know what your, your message is, what your goal is, and then they can assess, are you actually following through on that and delivering as promised? So it defines your story's purpose. And again, its aim is always to engage your readers, but you don't want to give away too much. You don't want to give us spoilers, but you do want to get them to buy in, to buy into the story, to buy into the overall adventure that they've invited their readers on. And the editor will use the blurb again, again the blur, not the blur, the blurb <laughs> again and again and again to, um, to make sure that they cross-reference and that you're following along that. And if it's not accurate, then they're going to basically give you some recommendations on how to better improve that. The blurb is not written in stone. You, it changes. And of course, it allows you to, to do it more and more in the future. So... This is where you're going to introduce your heroine, your heroes, all of that within your blurb. And you're going to make sure that you're creating some intrigue so that they're interested in your story. And you don't want to give away the spoilers because, but again, this is all part of what you have to do to publish anyhow. And this is what your editor is looking for so they can evaluate your plot and promise. And again, you always want to focus on relationship because this is romance. It's about relationships between your characters, relationships with your characters, relationships with your readers. So I kind of like to think of it as romancing your audience. You know, they, they really want to get them committed and involved with your writing in such a way that they would never think about leaving you. So are your characters balanced and essential to each and every scene? Because the editor takes a look at the entire manuscript and they're looking at, you know, how many words are each in each scene, how many, how big is the, the chapter, how, how, when the characters are in these scenes, which characters in the scenes, are they essential to the scene? 
Are they given the correct amount of uh, acknowledgement? And, you know, how are they engaged? Because it really does come down to balance. And if you have one scene that's extremely larger, is that for your protagonist? Because it should be. And if not, it should have a huge impact on your protagonist at least. So your heroine is your protagonist. This is the person that you're engaged with, you're rooting for, you really want them to, to win or lose in your story. And your editor is going to evaluate this during their edit and they're going to get back to you. When you're working with editors, as I mentioned, um, it's changing now. Used to be you did an edit and it, it, there was no confined demands that you delivered. But now we know that we can deliver certain aspects, which is, you know, evaluating each and every of your scenes, evaluating all your characters, evaluating your plot, your development there, uh, looking at your story arc, the key scenes, and making sure that you know exactly what's missing and how to strengthen your story as you go along. So the editors are going to evaluate, as I mentioned, the word count. That's per scene, per character, per chapter, et cetera. And then is it engaging for your character? And is the impact, is every single scene that you're including, does that scene have an impact on your main character, your heroine? If it doesn't, is it necessary for the book? And this is something that people, you know, you may write a beautiful portion, but it really needs to drive the story forward. It needs to keep the, you know, protagonist moving forward in such a way that it is essential to the story, not just beautiful addition, but essential that it is giving something that we need to carry on. All right, let's see here. So they're gonna evaluate all your characters. Um, you can do this yourself or it can be done for you, but this is basically where we start on every edit. We create a list of all of your characters and we look for misspellings, confusions. We're looking for, you know, what roles do they have in there? The, we're designating the protagonist absolutely and their presence in each scene. Which ones are they in? Which ones are they out? How long was that scene? You, there is a mathematical equation, an algorithm being used here to determine that your, your story is structurally balanced. It has to be structurally balanced for the human brain to love it. There's been certain uh, forms that have been proven again and again over the years. So that's what we're using from. And what we've done is with the technology that we have today, we've been able to break it down into exact details of what we need to look for. And that's what your editor is doing. That is what we are training them to do again and again. And this is what you need to know for yourself as self-editing to be able to do this and to understand what your editor's doing so you can have that conversation and really get the best return on your investment there. Um, the point of view is important for each one and of course that it matches the purpose of the scene. So if a scene exists, maybe the protagonist not in there, but we need to know it had an impact on them. So there's different things going on there. And again, you know, we have the software now, it, it allows us to do a lot of this and you can do it yourself or we can do it for you. So I did go through in preparation for today and I sent out an email to several of my top editors and I asked them, you know, when I'm doing this, this presentation about romance, what are some key things that you would like to share or some experiences? So I've thrown those in here to kind of give you a little bit more personal today rather than the structural to make it even more relevant. So this is from Leanne and our character descriptions should be worked into there. And again, it's back to that show, don't tell that we've talked about. We've been doing some interviews with Haley from Pro Writing Aid and we've published those in terms of how to show, not tell. And what Leanne mentioned here was that she tossed her blonde hair over her porcelain skin shoulder is such a better way of, of describing what's going on rather than she was a blonde Caucasian woman. <laughs> I found that kind of funny. So I thought I'd share that with you. Again, always remember show, don't tell. We are talking a lot today about the objective structural edit, but that does not mean that we are not evaluating every word emotionally and subjectively to see how it impacts your characters and your readers. So we can't lean too far or the other. That's why you use an editor. They have experience and training and publishing skills that combine with the software to provide the best return there. So 
have you outlined your scenes accurately? And again, when you act when you're doing this, it helps you to kind of see the storyline because we're using this if you name every scene and either you can do it or the editor does it for you and you give them each a name which allows you to see basically the story arc of what's happening there and it's your table of contents you're actually using what happens in each of those scenes what are the significant events or results so that you can see how you're building and where are your five key scenes within the story arc so we're going to evaluate that overall as part of the plot so what you can do with your romance novel is break it down into each of the scenes and name them and you know where's the love interest when do they meet what's the challenge you know what do they have to overcome when does it change from uh, you know, a, a love interest to my soulmate, I could never leave them ever again. And you need to identify these in the romance uh, adventure here. So your editor is going to evaluate each scene and how it affects your and impacts really your heroine and making sure that they each have a purpose. So the word count that we mentioned before, which may not be as sexy as other things that we do, but the word count is so essential because it allows us to literally weigh the value of every scene and every chapter and the more words you spend on that chapter or that character or that scene that makes it more important and if you're spending words on a scene that does not have a strong impact or is not essential to the overall plot or the events which are impacting your character then you need to reduce it is just a simple, easy way of looking at it once you have the information. But you need to extract that information and look at it objectively to go forward. So everything in the book, again, this is from Leanne, in the book needs to be there for a reason, just like a movie, nothing extraneous. So we don't want the reader learning about something about the character that seems like a foreshadow, like they don't like cooked raisins, but it never comes up again. And that's so true. Don't give us trivial extra information. This is not your love. You don't need to, to know all the small details. There are things that make it uh, interesting and engaging and cute. And, and you love that person for certain things. But the details need to be used in a way that they're significant, again, to the plot. Because otherwise, you are confusing your readers. And the story is written for your readers. So when we're doing all this, we're looking at the story arc. And again, the editors are creating and you should be able to create and outline your story arc. This allows you to know if you're keeping your readers engaged, if you're following the form of the romance, you know, and we have our five key scenes here. Again, the inciting incident, plot point one, middle, plot point two, and climax. And this is standard. They're a little bit different when we go into romance and love stories. So I'm going to go through that in just a second. So one of the primary things that we like to talk about is the setup because you're talking about a relationship here. You're building a relationship because this is what makes romance. So it's going to include the first two key scenes here. It's your inciting incident and whatever leads up to plot point one. Those are very important. This is the setup as we like to call it. And it's quite often where you, your two main people or the love interest meets. Now, it could be two robots in love, it could be two dogs in love, it could be man and woman, uh, man and man, whatever it may be, there are just two things creating relationships. So it's very important that we focus on that and we set up this emotional platform and the base, the foundation of our story. So it's going to include the inciting incident, the plot point one, it's going to set the motion of the story. It's introducing the heroine, the love, how they meet, and why they can't be. Now, this is, again, just using an example here. When you get the handouts today, you can, uh, again, go in and down, download here. I think that Christina from Fictionary does a really good job of doing writing this out in regards to uh, the books that she has there. So what I've done is just kind of list them out as examples, you know, these are the basics that are going to take you in the setup from incident to the pot point one. So these are examples and they may vary a little bit, but about this many is the minimum that you need to move forward in your story effectively. And of course, why they can't be, why they can't part from each other. So this is your story arc. Um, this is from Fictionary's uh, 
software that we use as story coaches. We're the first in the world certified to do that. And what we're doing is we're putting your book in there and we're using this to evaluate where you are. And you want it to follow this. So we'll, we'll cover the algorithms that tell you exactly or approximately where it should be in what range. But your, you want your story arc to look something like this. If it's too high in one section or too low in another significantly, then this is where your editor is going to come in and show you what you're doing really well. But they're also going to show you where the challenges are. And they're going to give you specific instructions based upon their experience of how to fix that in your genre, in the niche, which, of course, we're talking about is romance today. So you want to prevent, present significant challenges. And this is from Jefferson, who's also a certified story coach. And if the challenges aren't earth shattering, it still needs to make the reader feel that for these particular characters that you now are engaged in, that you like, and that you are rooting for, um, that these challenges are insurmountable. Insurmountable. Boy, I'm really kind of struggling today. And it's important that the obstacles aren't immediately overcome. So again, this is creating that story and keeping everyone involved. Oops. So your key editor is going to look for the five key scenes. Incident, plot point, oops, plot point one. So the first two are creating our setup and then we're moving into the middle. Now the middle is about 50% of all the words that you're writing. And half of that is gonna be from plot point one to the middle and the other half of that middle is the middle to plot point two. So you've got you know 25% between of your entire story between plot point one and middle and 25% of your entire story between middle and plot point two. So you really need to evaluate where are your words, how does it weigh, and where is the significance. And it has to be engaging, especially in the middle, because if you lose the pacing, you may lose your reader. They put down the book and they may walk away. So deciding incident we have, it's where your heroine's world changes. It's changed forever and it's very significant. And this is where we're going. And when we get to the plot point one, it is permanently, it's the point of no return. It leads them down an entirely different path in their life. And again, this is the 25% of the story. And with romance, this is going to be building upon and creating that connection uh, so that we're creating the setup for the overall story and the romance. So inciting incident plus uh, plot point one is the adhesion in romance. And again, looks like I did not edit my paper here. Your editor is gonna look for the proper position of the scenes and the events to make sure. If for some reason, since we have those five key elements and one is out of, out of position, structural editing allows us to take that entire the entire chapter if necessary, normally just a scene or two, move them around and rearrange them. Of course, giving you professional recommendation on why you're doing it and how to do that effectively. So this is part of it, but you being able to look at it from the word count significance and what, if you can identify those five key scenes, then you yourself can do the self-editing to create this um, effect and to have it in a stronger position. Now. Again, the idea is that if you can self-edit structurally, you can save time and money and frustration and go directly into line editing, which is looking more, you're no longer moving things around, you're making sure it's all consistent, the style, it flows, it transitions, and you're on a totally different level of editing now. Second here. So, <laughs> The use, you're going to be using your story elements. We've uh, covered those in the previous weeks, and you can see them on the replays on the page for the self editing school. The story elements were created by Fictionary, and of course, this is what our editors and our story coaches are looking at. They're evaluating the word count, the balance to the scenes, the editor to the plot, to the character overall. Where is the character, and how does it balance? Once you have that, that is basically the end of Act One in your romance story. And you're going to build to your middle scene now. So this is when your heroine, this is, you should have this whole transition happening in the middle of your book. 
that the heroine transforms from being reactive to all the things that are happening around and making a conscious choice, a conscious decision that they become proactive. If that is, I'm going to spend my life with this person or I'm going to solve this problem, whatever it may be, be they need to have decided that they're no longer just put into this battle of their, not their free will, but they're actually choosing to engage and make all the steps in the story. And this is where your readers become highly engaged, highly involved and committed to the character to make sure that they succeed in whatever they're trying to overcome. And this becomes your act two. So if you're looking at the picture again, you're now moving from the middle to plot point two. And again, that's 25% of your overall word count and you are moving along. Now to give you an example of what this middle, what this can consist of, uh, as I mentioned here, between one and two, it's your heroine's presence and impact is happening there. So this is, when you're moving to plot point two, this is your low point. It's where they, they're determined to win or lose everything, but it is a really low point for them. They're struggling. So here's some example of the story scenes again. Uh, you're going to keep the story in motion at this point. So perhaps they begin to start, they doubt their love. Uh, then the doubt keeps growing. There's something that's happening there. So you want to put in specific actions, events, challenges, tension. You're building this up here. Uh, they start distancing from one another. So you, you feel like, oh no, what if this doesn't happen? You really, really want them to get together. They put up their guard, they have a major fight, a breakup, whatever it may be. Because again, we're going on that storyline, on that story arc up. We're building our tension, we're building the conflict, we're, but we're doing this for romance. So we're always focusing on the relationship. That being said, this does not mean that it cannot happen in an extremely dynamic world or in a historic event or during World War II or some other creative backdrop that, you know, don't trivialize it, make it part of something that engages the reader and really gives it something unique. Because as much as we're looking at the objective structural um, checkpoints that we can look at and determine how this works, we also want to make sure that we are being unique we're creating a new voice, we're adding something that doesn't just become like every other writer out there. So your editor during this time in the act two is evaluating each scene and event. They're looking at the use of your story elements, word count and balance again, and the character's presence. But as I mentioned, they're doing it both objectively and subjectively. Objectively is the word count, the numbers, the elements. Is it there, is it not, does it work? Subjectively is, how do I feel about this? Is it, does it really engage me emotionally? Am I using the right senses? How am I, you know, what has been used in the past to create a challenge that people often respond, respond to in a predictable manner that works, but is unique to this story or this plot or this writer. So the climax is when the heroine's ultimate conflict it, which is going to determine the fate. And you're building, as I mentioned, you're going up the hill on the story arc to create the greatest tension and the most emotional upheaval for your protagonist. So tension works well between any kinds of characters, particularly in romance novels. It doesn't have to be stereotypical, like they don't like each other. It, it can simply be a problem. And again, make them real, make them somebody that your readers can relate with or care about or really want them to win for whatever reason. And they have to overcome problems and or issues and it has to be dealt with. So as I mentioned, you can use great backdrops of war, conflict, civil issues. Uh, again, examples here are Gone with the Wind, Pride and Prejudice, The Notebook, etc. So don't be afraid to tackle the big issues in your story and provide that colorful and meaningful backdrop as Joanne mentions here. So again, this is directly from our uh, certified story coaches. Does your story arc correspond to the standard form? This is what we're checking. If it does not, then your editor or yourself, you need to figure out how to make it come within that form so that it fits. It's just the way it is. So you're going to be rearranging your five key elements or your five key scenes, I'm sorry. 
and making sure that they happen at the appropriate time in the appropriate manner. So our inciting incident happens around 10% there to 20, the plot point one, it's normally at 25%, but you know, it's 20, 30, we have a little bit of range there. The middle is in the 45 to 55%, it's right in the middle, makes sense, right? 50%, that's where your middle should be on the book. And plot point two and your climax. So it's all relatively easy, but the reason why I provide these for you is so that if you're creating some kind of uh, checklist or you know assessing, these are certain things that an editor has a list and they're just checking out. They're either using it electronically or manually or by memory. And you need to be aware of this. And so when they ask you where the key scenes are, if you look in the middle of your book, is your key scene located there? If it's not, then you need to move. You need to either build some more uh, up to that point or you need to take away some things and let it fall back in the, in the appropriate area of your novel. And again, are you creating believability and chemistry? Because this is where it really comes down to um, being a romance. You are creating relationships. You are creating engagement, not only between your characters, but between your writers and your readers. So a seasoned writer knows how to build up the relationship. They, they, they use tension, flirting, characters, etc. But one of the key things we see again and again is trying to work with chemistry and believability. Because chemistry and believability mean that the two characters have fallen in love and it's just never going to be the same. So they have your readers have to believe in this. If they don't buy in, they will put down your book and walk away. So if you're struggling with this, get some help. Get some help. If you're not sure why people are engaged, ask, look for these specific things, include it on your instructions, include it to your, your beta readers, whatever you may be doing to ask, you know, specifically, how's the chemistry? Do you feel like you like these people, all of them? And do you, does it feel believable that they would actually have a relationship between them? Why? And if not, what, are the, what would it take to make them connect? And those are very important issues. So how they interact, again, chemistry is shown, not written. And so you really need to show, not say, how, they're, how are they speaking to it, each other? What are their actions towards one another? How are they behaving in front of their friends with this other person? And you have to develop this. Otherwise, as I mentioned, it all falls flat. And that is from Allison. So when we're looking at the scenes and characters, we need to make sure that the key characters are always in the key scenes. And we need to make sure that the heroine's word count is significantly larger than the other characters' word counts total, because that indicates that they're actually the heroine, the protagonist. We want to keep the scenes balanced for, for importance. That means, again, when we put them in there, <clears throat> the word counts, the the scene should have relatively equal amounts unless there's something significant happening there. If there's something of significance, not only does it mean that it can have more words, it can have fewer for extreme, but it's to break up the pacing and to keep it balanced throughout. And every single scene throughout the entire book needs to impact our plot and heroine and move that story forward so that this is why people are reading more so that it removes the relationship forward. It's happening in a way that we all enjoy because remember, we're gonna to come to an emotionally satisfying ending with our romance here. So another question is, are you developing characters with backstories? Now backstory is one of the uh, story elements that we've discussed again and again and again in self-editing and in <clears throat> structural editing. But take a look at this, everyone has baggage. So you just need to think about this, you know, what are, the reasons that they may move forward or not. What are the, the psychoses that are sitting in their head for whatever reason? So what were the previous relationships like and how is this one different? Or is it a pattern? And does that pattern scare them? Or are they seeing that there's something new here and it confuses them and they have to pull back because they don't know how to proceed? You know, these are all important issues to be asking yourself about every single character. If you can't give us a full description of that character, then you need to go back and work on the character out there. And there's a lot of great tools out there again and again and again that you should be checking on and using so that you can build better worlds, better characters, better, better backgrounds, better um, emotional dynamics, shall we say, 
so that it keeps them involved. And you can make this again, believable, not only interesting, but totally believable and something that your readers want on behalf of those uh, protagonists there. So a good romance will tackle a large range of emotions and it's all about the character development. If you haven't done that, then you really need to go back. If you feel like you have, this is an ideal situation to question you, again, your editor, your beta readers, you know, make a specific list of questions here. What have I done well? What have I not? When you deal with a story coach editor, they're always going to tell you you're doing this well, you're doing this well, so that you can repeat that again and again. Quite often, we just write without being consciously aware of what are our strengths and what are our weaknesses. And if we know what our strengths are, we can relax about that and take that energy and place it on where we are struggling or learn more about how we can be a better writer, better editor in that specific area of concern. And again, ultimately, are you creating unique stories with unique characters? Because that's what this comes down to. It really needs to be um, something different from the others. Quite often you get the, you know, big, successful uh, woman, you know, from Manhattan who comes home to the, to the local homeboy who's a country boy or whatever. And that's a couple, but that's so, you know, expected. How can we make it a little bit more interesting and unique? So you need a fresh hook and there's a ton of romance novels out there. Why is your novel different? Why will they engage with your characters and then come back begging and pleading for you to write the next in the series so that everyone can engage and enjoy on that? So it could be the characters, again, the occupations, their goals, there are things that are really attractive, you know, period films or period books, because it's something different from our normal world. It, it lets you escape and it takes you into a more fantasy world. Um, the setting, are you on Mars? Are you underground? Whatever it may be. And the plot, again, complications, which ones are unique and are keeping your characters from getting together. This is where we're looking at it subjectively. And you really need to understand your niche, where we started. You need to understand uh, your overall story arc, your key scenes, the stress and the tension, the conflict and the resolution that's happening there. So you want them to think, hmm, this is different from all the other romance novels out there. I like it. So that is from one of our editors here, Jefferson. And again, uh, this is the one I, I really thought was quite Quite helpful that you know you you want to escape into fantasy but it needs to still be diverse you can't everyone can't have everyone being beautiful uh, gods and goddesses there hair clothing because people get tired of the same you need to have a little diversity there and allison mentions that bridget jones broke the mold because the protagonist was a frumpy goofy character and not that she wasn't the insanely gorgeous and she was imperfect. And that's what we liked about those books and those movies. So it's okay and even recommended to give them a pimple now and then. They should fail. They should have struggles. They should be human so that we root for them and that we they actually have something to overcome. If they are perfect, there's absolutely nothing to overcome in there. So, and lastly, of course, going back to relationship, have you created intimacies? So they have to be realistic and relatable. Um, they, they should not be perfect. They have flaws and we want them to succeed is what Joanne is telling us. And so the relationship should be built not only to, from the characters, but to the relationship between your characters and your readers is super important and make sure that they care about the characters, that they, again, are on that side. And if not, you need to revise because your characters need to spark. They need to engage and you need to be devoted and committed to the character so that you make it to the end of the book. And again, Joanne said here that, uh, We've had, she's had a lot of romance novels. The protagonist was likable and love interest was less than desirable. And that can be an issue because especially if there's sex scenes, it's gotta be something where the chemistry works and readers don't wanna go through a novel where she finds her true love and her partner is just egotistical, insensitive, whatever. They've gotta want 
them to be happy. <laughs> you know, it has to be emotionally satisfying to to find something that they need and desire in life. And it's important to de to develop these characters on that deeper level so that the characters are likable and uh, in engaging there. So it tends to be light in tone, but creating likable characters shouldn't mean that it's cliche or stereotypical, uh, the city gal, small town guy that we, we mentioned earlier. So this is these are the factors that we go through when we get our certification. All of our editors have done that. And the links are here. You can check that out and find out more. And one of the things I just wanted to mention that we haven't really talked about previously is, you know, this is the different things that when you're looking for an editor, and it could be with us, could be with anybody, um, whenever you're ready, this is what the editor should, you know, what you should be looking for. And that's pretty easy, you know, in terms of having experience. But certification is a new quality. So that's, that's the only one on this list that I would say absolutely it's going to be much harder to find. But try, and, try before you buy, get a sample, references, uh, proven success, all of those things are important. Uh, get a firm price because it can be, you know, it is expensive. Editing is one of the most expensive investments you're going to make. So make sure that you know how much it is and that you're satisfied with what you're paying for. But more importantly, I want to talk about what now, now that it is changing, now that the services have differentiated due to technology, due to everybody has access to pro writing it. It's very easy. It's, you can try it for free. And so these tools are making writers better, but it also means that the editors are better. So you should demand and expect a higher level of editing than you have previously. And that's why we chose to certify our editors. But one of the things that this allows um, you to achieve through either self-editing, as we're talking about now, or using an editor is that you should walk away from editing with a story arc that is outlined. You know what your story arc looks like. You know if it fits the, um, the normal form. You should know exactly which are your five key scenes. You know them because you've named all your scenes, you know where they are, and you should know that their strengths are there. And if not, you should have a really, really good idea of how to fix that. What are the missing elements of those? So if you're working with an editor, you should expect them to tell you how exactly, not just mention, oh, this is kind of open, it needs to be strengthened. What does that mean? So make sure that you're getting instructions on how to strengthen them. And uh, the advantage is when you learn the lingo, you understand the rules, you understand the process better, you will be able to produce better revisions and better stories ultimately. You should know the word count for each of your scenes. You can do this individually. Or, and we're doing a series right now. Uh, you can join us next Tuesday or Wednesday, I believe it is. And if, if you want, I'll send out the link uh, that we'll be talking about, you know, how traditionally we're using uh, Excel. And this is a, a scene that we're doing right now, a four-part series that basically explains how Excel, which was created in what, 1984 or something, we're still using it. It's not created for outlining books. It's created for mathematics and other uh, calculations, but people have used it because it has a convenience layout. People have used Trello and various other um, tools to outline, but it's really, really better now. But if you use that, how do you get your word count? So you can just map it out and see it. Not particularly easy, but totally available and you can achieve that. So once you have those word counts, you can make sure and double check, does it match your genre, your niche? Does it have the correct pacing and you want to have this validated and affirmed? And of course you need to be able to assess each scene and chapter. Are they themed and balanced? And then of course we have talked many, many times about the story elements. There are 38 story elements created by Fictionary. And again, how are we meeting up on those? So again, you should also walk away with a professional summary letter that tells you specifically what you did well and what you need to change and why. So that is the entire one today. It was a lot. I'm going to go into our chat here in a second. And oh, my. there we go. Stopping share and going into our Q&A. So Let's see here. So we've got a lot of questions. Oh my goodness. Do, do, do. 
Historical romance is not on the niche list. Of course, it, that was not a complete list. <laughs> so please make sure uh, that you go through those. I did not go through the specifics of each and every um, niche because there are a lot of differences to look for in each of those genres. And you need to be aware. I mean, if you're looking at fantasy versus the historical, those are completely opposite. So or not completely, but they have a lot of uniqueness to them. So please make sure that you go ahead and get familiar with your specific niche. Um, and it's all there, Google on, Google on. But the biggest point I'm trying to make when I make this list of the different types of niche for romance is that there are a lot out there and you need to know exactly where you are. You're going to have to do this for marketing when you go into Amazon anyhow. So please, please, please make sure that you're very aware. Uh, answered live. Done. <laughs> okay. Um, what percent is in the climax? What percent of the numbers? Of, is that what we're asking? Because I'm not really sure. It should be at the 90% when you're getting there. So, you know, 50% of your words have built up there. So it's in that last 10% of your book. Um, but the percentage overall will vary a little bit, but it's in the handouts here. And we'll make sure we do that. Uh, does the main character have to be the heroine in a heterosexual romance? Can it be the hero? We're using words here. Uh, the heroine, the protagonist is, it does not have to be the female. No, of course not. You can have it other ways. It's just whoever is your protagonist, I'm referring to as your heroine. And the hero is the one that is there to save them or fulfill their wants and needs. So it's not a gender specific as it can be gender specific when you're using the words, but the protagonist can be either male or female. So if you replace the word heroine with the word protagonist, they'll, you'll find that a lot easier to get the answer that you want. And the love, again, love story from the male perspective. What are the differences and what are the similarities? Well, you're still going through conflict. You're still finding someone that you have fallen for, that you must overcome challenges and that your life changes at some point that you will never be the same. And now you will go through those steps. So again, it's the male versus female is not really relevant. You just apply whatever works for that person. So um, there's nothing left on those. So let's see here. Are some editors, publishers less demanding than others? How do you find those with more slack? I've been reading romances for each. At least half I like many of these rules. Uh, like a couple that randomly meets in New York the City multiple times. That's realistic? Question mark. A character who changes sexual orientation in one scene with no foreshadowing. A book middle. What wanders over one. Okay. I'm looking for an editor that would cut me some slack knowing my story ain't perfect. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a great question here. Your editor, of course, is going to answer your questions. But remember, when you hire an editor, it is like hiring a private um, trainer. You ultimately, the slack, it comes from you. They're going to give you the best outline, the best format to follow to achieve the strongest and best and healthiest book, shall we say. And you choose to either do the work or not. They can't do it for you. There's many things at first editing, I would say we highly over deliver because that's been what we've done for years and years and years. But ultimately the revisions and how you achieve those are up to you. So of course we know your story is not perfect. Of course we're not going to criticize you for that. What we will do is show you the ways to strengthen your book, strengthen your story arc, strengthen your key scenes, your characters, your plot, your um, overall genre there. And then, you know, it's up to you to go back and do the revisions. You ultimately will choose which ones you want or don't like, want or don't want. Um, there is not an option to accept all. Quite often people do that in track changes. I would never recommend that because you need, ultimately it's your book, it's your voice, it's your story, it's your uh, baby, and you need to be responsible and loving and kind to that. And make sure that you accept each and every one of the recommendations. And remember, we're humans. That's the that's what we're talking about. This is not um, a, a computer that just spits it out and we're done. We want to make sure that it's correct. But of course, there may be errors in that. So you need to catch those or you know question why did you mean this or that. And of course, the editor can better explain that. 
hope that answered your question. So let's see here. After editing is complete, how important is your romance novel book cover? Most seem to have bare chested men on the cover. A book by its cover is always important. It's super important. So after the editing is complete, I would find, you know, the best way is to go into Amazon or wherever and look in your niche, what is the main color? What is the format? What is the font, the type? What works for your audience? And try to come into something similar because that's where people make their decisions. And if you wanna have success in engaging other people that are your audience, then you need to go to what they like. If they don't like green, don't make it green. So it's just the way it is. And the bare chest men on the cover, if there's a lot in your genre or your niche, then find a good bare chest to show them. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Word. Uh, can you put the questions in the Q&A before answering them? so we can follow along, thanks. Oh, sorry, uh, didn't do that. So let's see here, there's a few other things that we've got. So again, I think we're, we've, uh, I only marked off one. For sentencing on climax, answered, done. I guess this puts it up there, so we're done with those. So again, I will make this available and we have free samples and the advantage that we're trying to do here is to teach you how to do the self-editing so that you feel confident and can move along and do this yourself. If at any point you get frustrated, tired, whatever it may be, then please reach out to us. We know that next month is NaNoWriMo. A lot of you are going to be committing to those 50,000 words in one month. And I hope by end of December, the first of the year, that when you're looking for an editor, you'll reach out and find someone that really is a match for you. Not all editors will match you. And again, like they give me slack. You need to find someone that feels right and that their tone and their communication matches what you're looking for. So, Michelle, are you here? Yes, I'm hey. here. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's great. And I see we have lots of discussion on the side going on. So, yes. Oh, my All goodness. Right. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming today. Thanks for engaging. Uh, this was great, Joellen. A lot of great stuff for our romance audience. It just kept the Romance Writers Week momentum going even longer, which we're always good game for here. Okay, perfect. Right. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you again next month. Sounds good. Bye, everybody.